aspect of our project is the collaborative work that we have done across discipline. So our project consists of Hargur Deep, a uh, major in design and drafting from Sheridan College, Radhika, major in uh, solid and energy from University of Toronto, and myself, Nagas, a uh, major in mechatronics from University of Toronto as well. Imagine your life without electricity. You won't have your cell phone to connect to your loved ones. You don't have your computer. You don't have your internet. But other basic needs, you don't have, you can't use heater to warm yourself, but you can't prepare food, and the list goes on and on and on. So we all believe that electricity is a fundamental thing for, develop, for developing any type of country. So, um, we, uh, there are developing countries around the world that they don't have access to this electricity. We chose for our project to scope down to Somalia, which is a region that has 0% um, energy pr uh, production from renewable resources. But at the same time, it has one of the highest uh, wind speeds across the world. So there is definitely a possibility of using wind turbine technology to have this developing country uh, and get the access to electricity for Somalia. But there are obviously limitations that there are cost, time, manufacturing processes, and equipment. So the goal of our project is to use 3D printed blade um, to, uh, to give access to electricity to countries like Somalia by overcoming all those barriers that we have through manufacturing projects. That's how we designed our objectives to be uh, to reducing the manufacturing time, cost, tooling, and optimizing the performance of the design for additive manufacturing. Now I'm going to pass uh, the presentation to Radhika to walk you through the design process. Thank you, Nargis. The design process, as you can see, begins with idea generation. And over there, you see a blade that we purchased, and it was our initial prototype for reverse engineering. And when we came up with ideas, we spent about two months deciding, what do we want to do as our project? How can we impact the world? And that's when we decided, let's do wind turbines. So we looked at things in the local area, studied wind turbines around like the Toronto area, and then we found some CAD models online that were available, but we decided, you know what, let's take one, reverse engineer, create something of our own. So reverse engineering, there's three potential methods that we know of that we could use. There's CMM, which is very labor intensive and expensive. So that goes against the fundamental basics of our project, so we didn't use that. Plaster molding, which is material intensive, which again, our project was aimed to save on material. 3D scanning, as you can see Deep's arm in the picture. It's, it was good. However, we found that due to tight tolerances and the twist in the edge of our blades, um, the files wouldn't mesh together properly, so we had some issues with SolidWorks in that case. So we decided instead, why not go the old-fashioned way? We took our blades, we measured it up using measuring instruments, we applied a truss force to it, and a pitch angle such as like a normal windmill would apply, as you can see there. The result was good, but we thought we could do better. So we went on to do some more research, and this is our beautiful prototype in action. We did some research in the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, and we applied some airfoils, the S833, 834, and 835, to the, to the tip and the primary section and also the end of the blade. And these three airfoils are optimal for blades between one to three feet in length. I'll give it to Deep to describe how we optimize our design. Thanks, Radha. Now that, now that you have seen uh, all our blade designs, we started from purchasing a model, designing one based on just a pitch angle and uh, it's just a simple measurement, and then optimize it using airfoils. <clears throat> I'm going to go through how do we end up uh, printing it. Uh, there's a huge, huge uh, uh, case study that took place from last November till today. Um, we had our printer up and running last night too in the, be in the hotel room. We brought in the maker bought and it was still going. So I mean, there's tons of research that can be conducted even further to expand on this project. But from our research, what we came across was that orientation plays an essential role when we're making any kind of prints. We wanted to get a really, really smooth surface finish. So our first thought was that we should print it in this orientation. 
And we'll pass this blade around. You can see this orientation is very, it creates a very smooth, smooth uh, end result. However, what we noticed was that because it's building layer upon layer upon layer, as it's spinning, it's going, the layers are going against the motion of the wind. So it could potentially break. We did not have any way of uh, doing any kind of analysis because we didn't manipulate the internal structures. And I'll talk about that after. The second orientation that we decided to go with was vertical orientation, this method. And you can see that there's some threads that are coming off, and this is due to heat deflection. Um, the heat would not go through. We tried to print multiple blades in this orientation uh, to make sure that we're getting this result over and over again, and 98% of the time, we received printing these blades in this orientation with deflection. Then finally, we decided to um, investigate a bit further, and uh, we chose to go for horizontal uh, orientation. As you can see, uh, very minimal support material at the bottom. It's, there's no post process required other than just extracting it off. Very simple. So we're saving the time even after the blades are printed. Uh, where in different orientation, you still have support material. You would either have to dis dissolve it, which would take several hours, or you would have to break it apart. So we'll pass this one. We'll pass another model around, which shows the internal structure of the blades. And this I want to really emphasize, because this just wasn't possible before 3D printing came out. We just couldn't achieve internal structure like this um, when we were making such tight tolerances and, and uh, casing around it. Okay, overall, uh, we compared our results with the quotation that we received from uh, our design that we came up with from an uh, injection molding company. Um, they had quoted us that it would take them uh, approximately 80% more material to injection mold the blade that we're looking for. So we re reduced the material by 80%. We used ABS material because it withstands these conditions that we were looking for. Um, we, for initial idea was PLA, but PLA would tend to be a little bit more flexible, so uh, after doing a bit more research, we went for the next cheapest material that was available on market. Uh, again, we're trying to keep the cost down for this product and make sure that it withstands what we're looking for. Weight, we were able to reduce 39% of the weight. Now that we have manipulated the internal structure, uh, it, it was used as double sparse, so you can see the cube light uh, structure and internal structure. We were able to reduce the overall weight as well by 39%. Finally, time, we received a quotation of 28 days from the molding company, um, and they said that even though uh, they have given us 28 days, because of such tight tolerances, uh, we're not expected to get 100% of our uh, model design that we submitted. So 28 days and we were able to reduce the time, time by 20, uh, 98%. Uh, overall, three blades took us about 12 and a half hours to print. Cost, including the mold and the three blades, it was around $11,000. We were able to print all three blades for $203. The cost is calculated by the life, lifetime of the machine, Fortis 900, times um, the time that it took, plus the sum of uh, the material that we used, times the cost of the material, support material and model material. I'll pass it over to uh, Nargis to talk about sustainability. Okay, so having wind turbine for countries like Somalia, uh, that they have the natural resources available already, will reduce the uh, use of biomass material? And uh, consequently, it will be uh, less CO2 emission, which is um, according to our goal of having more sustainable design. According to empirical analysis, um, electricity plays a key role in, um, uh, in economic and development of, uh, development of uh, all countries. So by giving the electricity to countries like Somalia, we are giving them endless opportunity. We are improving their healthcare system, we are improving their society, their education, and healthcare. So in essence, we went from traditional injection molding to advanced 3D printing and made a whole whack of savings. We reduced the cost by 98%, the time by 98%, the material by 80%, and the weight by 39%. Thank you for listening to our presentation, and we'll open the floor for questions.